the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoy uh, your weekend uh, your, and last week, and I hope you have a blessed week coming up. And uh, this Sunday, we just did uh, the 23rd of July. We sat there and, and went over uh, the true mark of a Christian. But the title started off, because I ended up with two titles. And I want to show the two titles, and I want to read the scripture that we use, because the fact is we as believers need to start operating as believers and stop operating according to the world and understand that we are all accountable to God. And if you don't think that, then, then, then that's, you understand that stop calling yourself a Christian if you don't want to be accountable to God. A lot of cases we seem to be accountable to man, but we got to be accountable to God. Amen? So, this is the, this is a topic that uh, I felt I needed to address this morning, uh, but <laughs> the whole point is we need to understand the true mark of a Christian. But my title, then I go with this title. But the second title I want to show you, the scripture I'm going to go over with, uh, is "Do Christians believe we benefit from slavery?" That's a question. Do you? Because in Florida, they they want to put and say there was some benefit from being a slave. There was some benefit from being raped. There was some benefit from being uh, tortured and mutilated and hung and forced to lay, uh, to, to work in in cotton fields and 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 cake and you know other agricultural uh, things as if these people came from civilizations that didn't have those things, don't have those skills. But if, you, if you're that ignorant, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you something. The earliest and first civilization started where? In Africa. <laughs> that's not an indoctrination, that's a truth. And the fact is that those people came from, those people who were kidnapped, came from uh, cultures and civilizations that were surviving and striving as a governments and as, as people, as communities. They, they didn't come out there sitting there hanging on a, a, just in a hut or just spear, throwing a spear. These people came. And don't forget, too, if you don't know history, the Moors ruled Europe for over seven, eight hundred years. Maybe you didn't know that, but you know it now. If you're going to listen. So we got to say, no, there's no benefit from being a slave. You think so? You be one and see if you like it. So I started with that. But this is what the whole point I really wanted to get to is this right here, the mark of a true Christian. And I want to cover those scriptures. And like I said, I hope you enjoy this uh, study we're going to do. I'll break them down in segments. But the fact is that we have to go by the teaching of Christ. We need to show and bear good fruit. Fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there's no law. We need to bear good fruit. And then we need to also show the mark of a true Christian. And that's what this one is about, is showing the true marks of a Christian. And don't forget, Christ said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Obviously, if some people saying they love somebody else because they're not loving Christ, but they're not keeping his commandments. So here's the, the script I wanted to use that we're going to use by study. And those scriptures come at the end of the study. But look at what it says here. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving the hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide, on, provide things honest in the sight of all men. 
if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore the enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, he shall heap coals of fire in his hand. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the whole point we're saying is the mark of a Christian. And I like to read that again. Be not overcome with evil, overcome evil with good. Listen, we need to be and bear the mark of a Christian. These are the answers to the test if you want to be a Christian. You make that confession and you bear good fruit because it's time for us to shine. And I'm saying is that's not some of the stuff we're seeing in the day. It's not about shining, it's about lying. And we need to not tolerate that anymore. It's time to start making the deal with the devil and start making the deal with God through the new covenant, through Christ. Amen? And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you when I see you. And now we're getting ready to go to the next session or the concerning the study we did this week on the 23rd of July. God bless you and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. All right. Hey, God bless you. Good morning. Hey, I hope everybody had a great week, great weekend. And I hope we wrap it up on a, a Sunday service to go ahead and just get into the Word of God. But I also want to remind you, when you get into the Word of God, it is not about just going to church and checking a box. <laughs> it's about going there to refresh. I, don't, I like that word. To, to get come together, study the Word of God, and walk out to go do the work of God. Practice the things of God. And we need to understand what does it mean to do the things of God? What does it mean to do the work of the ministry? You know, the, the church is supposed to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Or the fivefold ministry gifts, right? You know, the pastors and evangelists and apostles and preachers and teachers are supposed to go and equip saints, equip you, equip me, equip one another to go do the work of the ministry. And we need to understand what is the work of the ministry, right? And does it mean to, to just go to church on Sunday or on a midweek service? Or does it mean applying that in your life, also applying it in your ministry, your personal ministry, to minister to others to the best of your ability, being led by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and why that's important is that we, when we, we have talked before about the history of, of, of ministry and the role that we're supposed to play and how critical it is that our actions, our actions, uh, be reflective of the calling of God in our life. Because there's a fearful thing for the world will look at is when Christians act contrary to the gospel and the teaching of Christ, which has been done since Father, I'm concerned since the crusade, since the slave trade, since slavery, uh, and the type of slavery they had as far as going after the people from Africa, uh, or even some people, I guess, in Europe. Uh, the indentured servants, uh, how they try to treat people that were indentured servants, the Native Americans, how they try to treat people, the Native Americans, uh, or the sell and witch hunt, uh, how they went after people that they felt was not Christian, testing them by throwing them in the water and see if they float. Uh, <laughs> Those type of things, or even during the uh, dark age and medieval times, uh, you ever been to that place called Ripley, believe it or not, you've seen some of the type of torture that people did. You said the movie, many of you see the movie Braveheart uh, and how they mutilated him. Uh, but some of the, some of the things was done saying that the people who was doing it, Christians. And I think it's time for us to know the true mark of a Christian. And first up, I wanted to say what came up with the news uh, this week uh, down in Florida. 
Linda was talking about uh, benefiting uh, the slaves benefited, or some slaves benefit from slavery. And you know, I guess the word some was make it okay, because the question I'm trying to figure out is, what's your sum then? Some were 80%, 90%, 1%. What was the sum, right, that, that benefited from slavery? And, and how do you call the murder, the rape, the torture, the manipulation, mutilation of a person and say they benefited from that? You know, it's almost saying this, why don't you go try to do that? You go benefit from torture and rape and involuntary servitude and, and all those other type of things and tragedies that occurred, you know, getting that free labor from those people. How about the fact is that most of those people didn't even have an opportunity to read. It was illegal for them to read. I wonder what, what benefit you you get somebody if you making sure they can't read. Uh, at least making it illegal for them to read. What what's, what's, what skill sets were given uh, when you won't even let a person know how to read or write? And you said they got a skill. What skill? The skills of farming? The skills of agriculture? You mean the skills that you get picking up cotton? That's that's a skill? Or, or all the other agricultural um, areas? That that a skill? You know, you 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 you, look, you gain a skill from doing that? What skills are you talking about? I know you were talking about the skills of cooking in the kitchen. Uh, let me see. What what else you got? Uh, uh, oh, I, I guess you think because you forced them to build things, that they got a skill from building things because you assume that where they came from, and that's what some people some people believe. <laughs> so, some people forget the fact is that Africans actually ruled, we call them Moors, ruled Europe for seven, 800 years. Uh, did, 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 did somebody forget that? Uh, did they forget the fact is that civilizations, the oldest civilization started in Africa? Did, did somebody forget that? Did somebody think that none of the cultures that were stolen or taken from Africa came from uncivilized places? I mean, they didn't have a culture, they didn't have an infrastructure, they didn't have a language. Did, did, did you, so, so if, you, if, you, if they came from a civilized place, and you can, you can sit there and argue and look at, and you better study world history yourself and see that most people uh, were in the same situation uh, as the people from Europe, and especially the Moors ruling Europe and brought in so many enlightenment to Europe, uh, that you're gonna sit there and, and, and say that these people uh, needed slavery to benefit from? Get a break, get a life, right? You do, you do, you need a life if you believe that. And the question I had here on the subject, my subject I had uh, for this, I got part two, this is part one, but this one is part of the fact is, do Christians believe we benefited from slavery? Do Christians believe that? And somebody said, why do you ask Christians do they believe that? Because if Christians are supporting that type of politician or politics, especially in Florida, that you are a Christian, and I don't care whether you are black Christian or white Christian, if you believe and you accept that type of behavior, do you need to, you need to really sit there and ask yourself, who are you? Are you part of the body of Christ, or are you are you a cardinal Christian, or are you a spiritual Christian? And if you're a cardinal Christian, and technically I mean you're, you're not a Christian, uh, because you're you're not going by the doctrine and teaching of Christ. If you believe murder and rape and torture and voluntary servitude were to benefit anybody. If you believe the massacre that was done by the Native Americans and you believe it benefited them, well, we're sick with the slavery part. 
do you believe people was a there was a benefit <laughs> in slavery? <laughs> That's the question I have there. And you know the fact is that if you are a believer, you gotta remember what you're supposed to follow the teaching of Christ. Not the teaching of anything else except for the teaching of Christ if you call yourself a Christian. You can call yourself something else. And you can and when you call yourself something else, that's fine. But if you are a Christian, do you believe that? Do you believe, do Christians believe we benefit from slavery? John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Do you love Christ? Because if you love Christ, then you know that you can't sit there and accept that label there, that title there. Do you believe that we benefited from slavery? Do Christians believe that? That's a question. That is a question. And I hope the answer is no for anybody. Whether you're a Christian or Islam or anything else, <laughs> or an atheist, I hope no, you believe that. But that, that's a that's a that's an indictment if you do. It's an indictment because you are more focused on the things of the world than the things of God. You're not focused on the teaching of Christ because I don't know what what part of that teaching of Christ you see where you both to rape and murder mutilate, lynch people. That's the tragedy and the history that we as Christians need to take off because that's not who we are. That's not what the teaching of Christ is. But that may be the teaching, that may be what some people believe that they are. But then if you do, don't stop hiding under the cloak you know, the sheep, what do you call the wolves in, in sheep clothing? Don't, don't, don't operate that way. Why, why are you, who are you deceiving? Because you're not deceiving God. You know, I put in that scripture in Galatians 6. It said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. What's a woman that so is actually written? What harvest are you putting together? What do you think? And, and, and I, you know, right now I'm praying for uh, that, that we move forward in this country because we don't want to we don't want to build up to the the, ooh, the 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 wrath of God. We don't want to. But that's if we sow all that type of stuff and been tricked or been deceived or been manipulated to to sow such atrocities. Isn't it a danger of concern that we may get to a point where the wrath of God comes on us? If we're planning a harvest of, of bigotry and hatred, and we did that, and you know, it's not just us, I'm talking about the, the people did the slave trade or the crusade, the sale of witch hunt mentioned and all that stuff. Are you not afraid of, of, of building a, a, a harvest of the wrath of God? Because if you execute those things, don't you think there could be a problem? You know, let's get into the scriptures real quick. It's all about the word. Let's see what the word says. And you and you know what? It's funny. Most of you already know what the word says. You, you, don't, you don't need scriptures. And one of my friends said, say, you don't need scripture to know what's wrong, right or wrong. You know, she, you don't. <laughs> it's clear of what's going on, right? So let's go to the next scripture here. <laughs> and I only want to put this in here, and I'd like you to, to capture this. Is the fact is that the Lord taught us how to pray to remind us not to do the things that we're, we have a history of that we need to share. Because not all Christians did this, but there's a lot of people that claim to be Christians did some very bad things. And some of them doing bad things even today, claiming themselves to be Christians. And we need to be able, because the next ses second, the other part of the session is talking about the mark of a true Christian. 
And we need to understand that we we gotta come from among those people that advocates uh, fleshly things, carnal things. But first of all, like I said, in Matthew 6, 9, the Bible says that the, the, the disciples asked the Lord to teach them, teach them how to pray. And he said to them, and he told them, he said, after this prayer, therefore pray me. Our Father, which art heaven, mean God. We talk about the Father in heaven, not talking about your, 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 your ministry here on earth or your person on earth or even political party or affiliation. But our Father, which is in heaven, how would be thy name? How great you are. That kingdom come. Your system is a, is a, is a system that we as Christians stand on, the kingdom of God. That's who we are. Thy will be done. See, the point is, when you sit down let your will be done, when you sit down let your actions be done, are contrary to of God, did you, even the Lord's Prayer, you're not being reminded that it's His will, not the will. If it's somebody teaching you to hate, rob, steal, or kill, you know that's not the will of God. That's not the teaching of Christ, right? So He says, Thy will be done in earth. See what I'm saying? Is you're supposed to do the will of God in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, meaning this is a daily feeding of the word of God and doing the word of God. How do you know how to do the word of God, live the word of God, if you don't get it daily, digest it daily? This is not a, a book or, that you read one day or one week or one time. It's over and over again studying the scriptures and living the scriptures. That's what we got to get to. And forgive us of our debts if we forgive the Torah, meaning we need to be able to give one another and how you want to be forgiven is how you forgive other people. And lead us not into temptation, meaning don't leave us, lead us into temptation that's going to cause us to do wrong and then lure people to do wrong. But to lure people to do right and if you're going to be tempted, the temptation comes. Is a temptation that is a test that you're supposed to be able to pass. But deliver us from evil. And don't be evil. You ask to be delivered from evil. Don't be evil. And we think being evil is called the works of the flesh. And we'll talk about that. For thine is the kingdom. He's saying again, his system. That's what we, you know, one of the things about when, when they came up and introduced one nation under God. Well, that means if we're a nation under God, then we're a nation abiding to the will of God. And, and, and His will is not uh, of, of taking advantage of doing the opposite of what Christ taught, but to do the will to conform to the image of Christ. And the image is, if, see, if some, of you, if some of you are so common that you think an image is the outward appearance, that is not the image he's talking about. He's talking about in your spirit, in your heart. Are you conforming to the image of his dear son? You, uh, you know what in Romans 12, it says like, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can do the things that are perfect toward the will of God. <laughs> you want to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Now, some of you sit there and say, well, that, 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 that image means that I can go in and then crucify people and condemn people and be the sword of God and the wrath of God. God didn't call us to be the, the wrath of God. God calls us to preach the good news, the gospel. And if that's not good enough for you, if you don't want to do his will, then why don't you just sit there and stop calling yourself a Christian? But God is the kingdom. His power, his power is what we want in our life, not the power of man, not the power of this world, but the power of God. You know, because he created the heavens and the earth. He didn't want to raise Christ from the dead. So he's the one that redeemed us and gave us a promise of eternal life. We need to be able to understand that you have to follow Christ. 
John 14, 6 said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father but by me. Listen, he said, no one. So if you sit there and do contrary to the will of God, and you sitting there thinking you're going to go to God, but you, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For what's in one man so that shall he also reap. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God forever. Amen. That's what he wants to teach daily. That's what he said that when you pray, incorporate these things daily in your prayer. Doing the will of God. Forgiving one another. Showing that, 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 that his kingdom matters. Don't be led into temptation. But be delivered from evil daily. And don't sit there and say, I just want to pray about being delivered from evil and be evil. Don't be, you don't be evil and expect to be delivered from evil. And that's just not right. He says right here, 14, 6, 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you also. Right? But that's only if Christ even tell you, look, my hands are tied. You have to forgive. So my father will forgive you because 15 said, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither would your father forgive your trespasses. That's a principle in the teaching of God. Christ taught this. He taught this. So you need to do this. Amen. Hey everybody, God bless you. I I, once again, I still be excited about getting to the Word of God, studying the Word of God, and discussing the Word of God with other people. And this Sunday is no different than for the rest of this week. Uh, we'll send out small segments, uh, these uh, sessions, so you can digest them. Uh, but I'm telling you, the the topic today, I had to with two topics. Uh, because you gotta be led by the Holy Spirit on what He wants to talk about, and 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 try to make sure people understand who we are, who you are. If you believe that you are a believer in Christ, if you are letting Christ be Lord, because it's not just confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus, but believing in your heart that God raised Him from the dead now to be saved. But the key to that is that you believe with your heart and you 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 confess salvation to your mouth. But the key, what I want to put in there is that you're letting him be Lord in your life. If you follow in Christ, Christ said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, but by him. So the question is, is some of the behavior that we do, are we doing that to, to please the Father, or are we doing things to please man? Do we believe we're going to always be accountable to man in this lifetime, or do we understand we'll be accountable to God? That's what I want to be able to talk about. And when, when, when I came up with the study, I had the initial topic is the mark of a true Christian. And, and I felt led and also inspired because of the news of this week where the state of Florida said then says that, you know, uh, slave benefit from being slaves. And you know, good and well that, that that's just a slap in the face to anybody to just think that you you benefit from being a slave. Uh, could I ask you a question? Who, anybody, anybody who was not, were not slaves, anybody who would, came to this country as free people or indentured people, but the fact that you came to this country and did you want to be a slave? Do you think that you would have been, you it would have been beneficial for you to be a slave opposed to being free? And the answer is going to always be being free. So it isn't the time that I get in there. Co- this is my opening piece I want to give and, and, and close out. I had two topics. The first one was, do Christians, I, you know, because I'm a Christian, so I'm talking about as Christians. Do Christians believe we benefited from slavery? And the answer should be no. And if you do believe that, then you need to go and t- come up on the line and tell people why you felt that you should have been a slave so you can get benefit. So instead of sitting there trying to say that somebody else benefited from rape, benefited from murder and lynching and the brutality and forced to, to not pursue happiness, but to be forced to work for somebody else forever, or at least until they died. You know, that's, that's the conditions of slavery. 
And, and something about Florida, they forgot the fact is that those people that actually uh, are anti-abortion don't go to forget that some of the people in Florida or in some of the other states, I guess, as well, use baby slaves That's to the day that the Lord has made. He didn't put the baby out we of it. We shall rejoice and, and, and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's, that's, that's demonic. Don't you agree? But if I'm not going to put that in here, it's a decree to believe in don't think we benefit Lord. from Love the brutalities of slavery. And if you think so, why don't you go and be a slave for yourself? You know, the bottom line is we are believers. And Christ had then said in John 15, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You know his commandments, right? John 14, 30, well, 13, uh, 35 or 34, where it says is a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. And then 35 says, and men will know you're my disciple for the love that you have for one another. So uh, obviously uh, people of slavery that became Christians, they still had the same type of brutalities and everything else really bringing up this modern day time. And yet... They did it by, to, from people who profess to be Christians. Uh, now, the benefit is from God, not from man. And if, if I go by the man's benefit, I don't want it. Not that way, anyway. The other one I put down here is the mark of a true Christian. And, and, and as we close out, the fact is, man, uh, are some people not recognizing, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of them, they don't really are accountable to God. They don't believe they are, but everybody will. The Bible said, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. Um, everybody will be go before God and give account of himself to God. You know, that's why we want to advocate Christ. So you take it for what you want, but obviously in this world, Talking about in this world, some people feel that they are not going to be held accountable. And maybe that's why they do what they do. They can't see what they're seeing or doing. Amen. So God bless you. Hope you enjoy yourself. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to put my introduction in. I may do a, a closeout as well. But don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments. And uh, I appreciate your support and listening. Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. Ha, ha, ha.